Hello everyone, welcome to Writing Quest. My name is Brendan Pugh, and in today's video I'm going to show you a little bit of how to uh, create a database and uh, outline your story using some scene cards. And so I'm just going to show you a simple way to do that if you're not looking for anything too crazy. And so I've created a new page here, which is what it looks like when you do this. I've just titled it Scene Cards, which you can uh, do right there. I'm going to hit the enter button and we're going to go to um, database inline and let's call this book one. So we'll just have this table is just book one like that. So it's already added a few blank ones there. We'll delete those out. So to do this, let's um, create a couple of different columns. So let's have this be this tags feature, which is a multi-select, will be our um, point of view character. And we're actually going to make it a select because you really only have one point of view character. And then we'll create a couple more things. We're going to call this the um, setup. Create a few more. Call this the tension. Create the crossroads. This is how I like to lay out my scene cards. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of other ways to do it, but this is how I like to do it. Uh, decision and outcome. So when you create a new property, if you just start typing, it'll default it to the text one, which is what we're looking for here. We're going to make these um, by going into our three dots up here. We're going to go to layout and we're going to call this, um, we're going to make sure this wrap all columns is on. Okay. So we're in a table view. And basically what that'll be is as we type in here, um, this is the setup of the story I like to write it wraps it like this, otherwise it'll just look like that. So this kind of helps, you know, no matter how much you write there, um, it shows up, so we can delete that. So we have name, we'll call this um, scene name, just for clarifying. Let's create a few more things. Let's do another, um, let's do a multi-select, and we'll do this as supporting characters. We'll put that over here by character. And then I think that will do for now. So this is based around scenes. So some people, you know, their one chapter is a scene. Other people have multiple scenes in a chapter. So this is maybe a really great way to kind of brainstorm your scenes and then you know, reorganize them in a way that you might like. So, and kind of play around with organization. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do scene one. Oops, sorry. Shift enter creates a new line. Scene two. Scene three. Scene four. And scene so we'll do it that way. Um, so let's do this. We'll just fill this out a little. Character one, character one, character two, character one, and then character three. And so as you can see, you can fill those out. So this is basically um, kind of a very simple way to do this. There's not much else to it. Now, what can get really exciting is when you start using the different um, different types of databases views. So, for instance, what you can do here is if this is scene one, you know, or whatever it is, um, as you're writing it out and you're working through it, now you can be like, eh, I think this one actually is, goes here. This one probably goes here. You know, you start rearranging it how you'd like. And, you know, actually scene five probably needs to come up here and be that. So as you're filling out, you know, the outline of your story, you can rearrange these um, however you'd like. Now, uh, let's duplicate this and kind of show you something that's more um, 
let's call this our gallery. Let's call this note cards, actually. I'm gonna use the gallery view to create this kind of note card look. So if we go gallery, now you have a, you know, something more similar to what you might see in Scrivener in their note cards view, their corkboard view. Um, so now the properties are on. So let's turn on, this would be a great view of like, you're just trying to kind of figure out your characters and um, supporting characters. And actually for this view, let's create a new property that's just called um, overview. And we'll make that visible as well. Properties, and we'll make overview visible. So now what you can do, and we'll make this, um, we'll go to gallery, we'll go down here, and we'll make card size large. So we can really get a big cards here. Um, so we'll click out of there. Now, if you go here, this shows you what it is and which character is the point of view character. If you click this, now you can add your things. You can write an overview. So this is the overview of scene two. And then we'll edit this one. And we'll say this is where the main character is running away. And so this is actually, so, you know, kind of create this into a workflow. We'll call this the, well, maybe we'll call this brainstorm, you know, it's a brainstorming view. And then we call this one the um, details view. So it kind of gives you just a small little workflow of how you can go, you know, as you're just kind of writing these little overviews, you can be like, yeah, oh, let's do this. And I think this character needs to go here. Um, another thing you could do is actually what we could do is you could, uh, let's duplicate this details. We'll call this general. So this would be like general info. So actually on details, we can have that there, but we'll get rid of overview so we will hide in view okay come over to general and we will hide these ones so hide that hide in view hide in view okay so just a couple of different ways that you can kind of um so say you start with in general actually you just start listing scenes you just have ideas you know i have an idea for another scene here and we're gonna create another one because I just thought of another one scene where the hero dies. That would be cool. Um, and then you can write an overview of just this might, might, might happen in that. Then you can come over to your brainstorm view and then you can start seeing, okay, maybe this one needs to go here. The hero maybe should not die until the end. So that's right there. And actually we'll call this, we'll add a, Character one, that'll be the one who dies. And character two, we'll say it's there and so on. And so basically this is a way that you can start working through your story. So general brainstorm, and then you come to the details. Once you finally start getting things in the order you like, you can, uh, so let's do... You know, then you can start working through your actual outline. So we know that this is character one. So what's the setup? The main character is in the forest. And then you can just start filling it all out. Um, so that's pretty much it for how, you know, a couple of different ways that you can look through um, and use just a simple database with your creating your scene cards. Um, very similar to if you were to do it in Excel or if you were to do it in Scrivener. But um, again, I, as if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you know the reason I like Notion is because there's just so many ways to adjust your data to see it how you like. So, you know, creating these little workflows like this to show you only the things you want to mess with and the, at the time. 
Um, it really helps kind of narrow your focus and help you only see the parts that you want to see. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope that you learned something and hope that you use this information to uh, build your own little scene card tables. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our line of Storybook Notion templates. We have Storybook, Storybook Pro, and Storybook Master Novelist. All of them are at uh, varying levels of complexity, but they can all help you to write better stories faster. So if you haven't checked those out, make sure that you do. And otherwise, I will see you next time on Writing Quest. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time. Huzzah!